More Castile soap making! Yahoo! Fun shapes this time. We're going to start by making an oil mixture. This is going to be composed of several different oils. Meg is helping me to determine the smell. She's going to do several sniff tests like this. She's smelling it while we mix the oils to determine the overall scent of the final composition. The nasal bulb is a liquid chromatography device that takes uh, volatilized molecules of smells in the air and allows you to experience them. It's a part of the flavor experience. We're going to add some comfrey oil here. This is a skin healer. Uh, I'm not sure how the wound promotion healing works, but Meg says so and so does Wikipedia. We're going to put a little bit more peppermint. The final test there, it, it's 14 grams. That's what we need for the batch. It's, it's good. Now we're going to add matcha green tea powder for the pigment effect. That'll add a nice green hue. We're going to mix it up real thoroughly like that. Next, we're going to weigh up some olive oil. We're going to start with a quart container. We're using a care jar right there, or a ball jar, either or. Some extra virgin olive oil. We're weighing out 455 grams. This is a super fat recipe, meaning there's going to be a little bit of extra oil left over. That's good for moisturizing your skin. Uh, we're also leaving the glycerol or glycerin in the soap. That's also good for your skin. Now we're going to weigh up some sodium hydroxide. We need 58 grams. This is the saponifying agent. The hydroxide helps to convert the fat molecules into soap. Now 104 grams of filtered tap water. This is what we're going to mix the hydroxide into. Sodium hydroxide makes a hard soap. You could use potassium hydroxide, but that would make a soft soap. Look at how exothermic this reaction is, 188.6 Fahrenheit. It's steamy. Do it outside. Keep something like that, like a watch glass, covering it. Now we're going to put the immersion blender in the oil and add the lye solution. This is the sodium hydroxide in the water after it's cooled down to about 110, 100 Fahrenheit. We're going to put it in there and we're going to blend it really thoroughly. And as it blends, it's going to thicken up. And when it first starts thickening, that's when you've reached the trace stage. And that trace is when you want to stop blending it. Um, the more, the thicker the trace, the harder it is to pour. Now we're going to add the essential oil and matcha powder, so the smell and the pigment. You'll see the resulting fluid soap takes on kind of a nice green, yellowy green hue, not too strongly uh, pigmented. We're going to use a squeegee I forget what these are called, squeegee brush, uh, to get most of that oil, um, the essential oil, in there. And then we're going to blend it all together. Now, when you do this is going to determine the overall uh, mixing property of the scent with the soap. And if you do it too late in the trace, it becomes really thick. And you'll see that here in the casting. When we're casting the soap, it's kind of thick and chunky. So. For casting in strange shapes like this, it's probably better to have a thinner soap. So the next time I try casting a special shape like this, I'm going to pull the, pull the mixture at an earlier trace stage to blend the pigment and essential oil. Uh, that way the final mix will be uh, able to conform to the shape of the molds more uh, evenly. And uh, these first four turned out real nice, but the following ones, the, the mixture continues to thicken and you can see it it's thickening from the reaction heat and uh, I could, it was hard to estimate how much was in there. I didn't know how much fluid these molds hold, but there it is. It's done. More Castile soap. We're going to tap it, tap, tap, tap like this. That helps to get the, the soap to fit the mold. Gets air bubbles out. 